Hey everyone, this is three question with Scott Team Q. There we go, man. Scott hanging out. Hey everyone, Scott's actually a superintendent in, is it, am I saying it right? Eatontown Public Schools? Eatontown Public Schools in New Jersey. New Jersey, right? And he, he gave me the warning that he's in an office. He's actually superintendent and, but he's connected to a school and there's going to be maybe some audio going on. I don't know what's happening right now. There might be some waving because of the, you know, energy efficient lights, which I think is hilarious because it's happened a million times on this podcast. So many schools actually do that. So uh, just giving everyone's a heads up before that, right? So we, yeah, you haven't moved in a little while, so I don't know if that's going to happen right away. Or Maybe what? I'll do a little little gyration <laughs> here just to make sure those the lights don't go off. I love it. All right, so everyone, Scott is actually um, superintendent, as I mentioned. Uh, we connected just recently. I, I worked with uh, his group in in Monmouth. I said, did I say right? It. Right. It's not Monmouth, which I thought it was, but it's Monmouth. And so uh, it, it was awesome to work with your group, a uh, group of superintendents. And so we met and connected there. And so I just said, let's go on the podcast. And, and here we are. So thanks for taking the time out of your day. Yeah, thank you. It was great meeting you last week. And uh, we really certainly got a lot out of the uh, the presentation and hope to have you back for a follow up. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And they, it was the um, one of the things I, I, I loved uh, the what I thought was really unique about the day, it was just superintendents. I don't think I've ever done only superintendents. Like there's just superintendents there. There's no curriculum people, nothing else. And I think, you know, that's that's kind of a unique thing, right? Like that, that's, I, I, I've never seen that before where, like, cause there is not one non-superintendent in that room, correct? That's correct. Everybody was superintendents from the Jersey Shore, you know, here in Monmouth, New Jersey. And, uh, it was really nice. I think uh, it was nice to kind of have that opportunity to connect with the group. But as we kind of, you know, mentioned before, I think maybe in terms of, you know, a, a future follow up, maybe have some of us bring, you know, some additional, yeah. you know, staff members just to elongate or, you know, enlarge the group a little bit, you know, further. But they're a great group of people. I hope you got that sense, you know, when you oh, uh, yeah. when you had an opportunity to, to meet with uh, with us, because even though it was a smaller, intimate group, yeah. there's a lot of personality in the room for sure. Oh, totally. And it was a wonderful group. And I think I think the reason I mentioned the that was just superintendents, I think that really mattered to me was you're all there to learn. And I think a lot of times people see superintendents as to be honest, you have a political position in many, and there is some, obviously some politics that you have to deal with and stuff like that, but you just felt there is a craving to grow, to get better, um, and really kind of lead learning in your organization. So I think that's why I appreciate it so much because sometimes there's that bad rap and people don't necessarily know what superintendents do, um, you know, some facets and they only see one side of it. They see the board meetings on TV and stuff like that too. So, um, I appreciate that you're all there. So we'll start with the three questions and, I know that you've done many different roles uh, in education and currently superintendent, but you think of a teacher that, you know, maybe you worked with someone you had as a kid, who's a teacher that really inspired you and why? Well, I'd have to go back to my high school days uh, and I graduated in 1991 just for context uh, in high school. And uh, I had an, I actually had an English teacher my sophomore year. The, uh, the high school at the time they were exper experimenting with a program giving sophomores a treatment of AP English at the time mm -hmm. to really allow them to get exposed to, you know, higher level English and higher level studies with the thought that by exposing us in our sophomore year, we would have a better chance in AP English, you know, in senior year, you know, passing the test and, and performing really well. The, the thing that I really enjoyed or I really appreciated about this teacher is that, and I can remember to this, uh, you know, to this day, was the high expectations that she had, you know, for all the students and not just collectively as a group, but for us as individual, you know, learners as well. And a funny story would always kind of resonated with me and I still kind of uh, keep it, you know, today I was playing football at the time and I wound up uh, breaking my, my collarbone at the time. And uh, I was out of school for, you know, a week or two, you know, dealing with, you know, the treatment, came back to school. And it was a pretty rigorous uh, course. And uh, I had fallen behind a little bit with, you know, just some of the reading and, and things like that. So after class, you know, I, I went up to uh, I went up to her and I said, you know, listen, I really apologize. I said, but I've been out, you know, for the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I'm a little bit, you know, behind right now. But, you know, now that I'm back, you know, I'm going to I'm going to catch up. And she stopped and she paused for a minute and she said, you know, Mr. McHugh, 
she said, uh, you know, the way I see it is you broke your collarbone, but there was nothing wrong with your eyes. I don't know why you couldn't have, you know, kept up and then you, you got, you know, your work done. And I left the class. And in the moment, you know, I, I went to my guidance counselor and I said, you know, I don't think I, sh I belong in this room. I said, you know, I'm behind already the whole nine yards. Behind the scenes, I kind of found out this later. My guidance counselor connected with this teacher and the teacher said, he's not leaving the class. He belongs in here. You know, he just has to learn a couple life lessons in this. And uh, I That's wound up staying in the class. And, and needless to say, um, one of the things that I enjoy to this day is I, I enjoy reading. I enjoy writing. I enjoy the research. Um, you know, part of it in that preparation part always sticks with me, you know, today, whether, you know, I'm a student learner, whether it's as an administrator, I just know when I when I get to the to the table, I better be prepared and, and ready to go. That, that is amazing. Have you ever seen? I don't know why I thought of this. Have you ever seen the movie Major Pain? Have you seen that movie? With no, Pain? no. Oh, my God. It's like, I don't I Maybe it's super inappropriate now. I don't know. But it's like. Damon Wayans is a sergeant and then he actually ends up going to camp and working with kids and the kid gets hurt. And there's like a movie like where the guys like, it's like, there's a, it's like a war movie, but it's like a con. I know it sounds weird. And the guy's like leg is like hurt from getting shot or something like that. And then major pains, like I'll take care of that. And he breaks his finger. And then he starts <laughs> screaming about his finger and he's like, see, it's not so bad now, is it? And it's like, and then later in the movie, he's with a little kid and he's about to do the same thing. And it's just like the discipline of that. And they're like, no, no, no. I don't know why I thought of that movie all of a sudden. Cause it's like, you're not hurt. Like, you know, you, you could have done that. And I just, that's the first thing I thought of. I, I love that. And I wrote a post recently. I don't probably, there's no connection at all to what I just said, but I don't know why I thought of that. Cause I just love. They're like, yeah, you're fine. Like your <laughs> your 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 eyes are broken. It's just your collarbone, right? And it's such, and, you know, <laughs> at the time, you know, I'm sure it was probably one of those innocent right. kind of things. It happens in the blink of an eye. Yeah. But even you know now, you know, probably you know, thirty so years later, it's still one of the things that's in ah. the in the back of my uh -huh. head. And by the way, not in a negative way. She was absolutely right. But as as a high school student, you know, right. you're developing, you're developing, developing maturity and, and all those things. It was certainly, a, you know, a good life lesson. And I got to say, um, even though it might sound, you know, a little bit less empathetic, she was right on the mark. And I think one of the things really? I'll always, you know, I'll think about is that she knew what she needed to do to get the most, you know, out of me. And I think I as teachers, as leaders, that's something that we're we're always striving to do. There, there is there. I wrote a post recently, and I'm sure as a superintendent, you you appreciate this. You know, a lot of times school districts focus on their ten year plan, right? And when I what I get really frustrated with is a lot of kids don't care about what is happening in your school, or what's going to be happening in your school ten years from now. They they care about what's happening right now. And what I talked about is the important aspect is you should be considering what are you doing to kids right now and how will that affect them in 10 years? That's what you actually should be paying attention to. And so that discipline that was instilled in you and yeah, high, like there's nothing wrong with high expectations. There's nothing wrong with, you know, but obviously there was a relationship there and, you know, high expectations. And now you look back at what it led for you. So you might not have liked it in the moment, but I think sometimes the things that we don't like at the moment pay off later, right? Like I got up and ran. I know you're a runner. I got up and ran at five this morning because I had a presentation and I wasn't happy about it. But when I was done, I appreciated getting it done, right? And so that that uh, that th 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 that discipline is often taught by our coaches and our teachers, right? So I I love that story. And maybe maybe I'm not as soft as uh, people would like, but I think it's obviously paid off for you. So now getting into the administrator portion of this, I know um, you're, you're currently superintendent, but I'm, I'm sure you worked with um, great leaders. I know um, you, you've mentioned other great people, uh, even before we go on the podcast, you were very quick to anything good in your district. You quickly were giving the credit to other people when we were talking, which I really appreciated about you, which I, you know, is obviously a lot of times I think when great leader, when leaders do that, it shows how great they are because they really empower people to do great things. And I think that's a really important aspect. But when you think of all the administrators that you worked with, maybe you had as a kid, who is an administrator that really stuck out to you and why? You know, it's an interesting question because I think that, you know, as I look at, you know, over the course of now, I guess I've been an administrator for the last 21 years. And 
I've been an assistant principal, principal, and now, you know, superintendent. I've worked with a lot of great people. And I think, you know, the learner in me, I'm always trying to learn from the principals that I help to kind of lead, you know, today they're doing really innovative, you know, things. And there's always something for me to apply to, to my practice. We were just mentioning, you know, a little while ago about the professional development session that we had here in, in Monmouth County about a week ago where, you know, you presented. And um, that's a group that I'm, I'm always constantly learning from as well, you know, just listening to different things that people are doing in their district and how does that apply to Eatontown and, and what can I, I might not be able to do it exactly that way, but how can I certainly apply some of the lessons in other districts to uh, certainly to what we're doing, you know, here. But I got to say, I would probably have to go back. It was my first administrative assignment. Um, I was an assistant principal uh, first year. Uh, the principal and myself, we were opening up a brand new um, elementary school. It was a K-5 elementary school in South Brunswick, New Jersey. And um, I'll never forget, I always just found as I began working with this principal, I found him to be very, very, you know, um, inspirational. And what I meant by that is, is that he was just so well thought, so well planned, you know, along the way. And when he presented in front of the teachers, you know, they, there was always a common thread um, in terms of, you know, what he was presenting, there was always a an introduction, there was always content that was presented, and then there was an opportunity to kind of make sense of that, you know, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And he just always seemed to have all the right answers as well. And as a new assistant principal, I would look to this gentleman and say, that's where I want to be, you know, uh, in the next, you know, uh, you know, few few years. And he was such a great, you know, model. The other thing that I probably should share is that I started as a high school social studies teacher. So when I transitioned from teaching high school social studies to an, a K-5 elementary school, mm -hmm. clearly I had a lot of things, you know, to learn because the way a, a high school environment right. operates and the way an elementary school does. Right. And I was fortunate enough to, to, you know, to really, you know, uh, have him, you know, certainly as a mentor. And the last thing that I would say in terms of the mentoring piece is that he took the time in the very beginning, knowing that I knew high school but I didn't know elementary school. And he really took the time behind the scenes to make sure that I got what I needed so I could be successful. And uh, the last thing that I would say that really inspired me about him is that the rest of the school really appreciated, you know, his, his judgment and the information that he would share with people to the extent that I'll never forget first week of school, you know, my office, you know, nobody's coming to see me yet because I'm new and they're, they're just mm -hmm. kind of beginning to develop a relationship with me. But I would walk outside my office and there, it was five people deep with teachers going to see him to talk about issues, to see what right. was going on. And I'm like, I hope one day the staff has that kind of relationship with me where they're going to use me to, you know, talk right. about, you know, ideas, talk about professional development, how we can solve, you know, the different problems. And uh, it took some time. And I went to him about that. I said, I'm a little concerned because you seem to be so busy and there doesn't seem to be as many people outside my office. And he said, you know, he said, Scott. I've been doing this for 10 years now. You've been doing this for about 10 minutes. You got to take some time and it'll all come, you know, it all, it all come to fruition. And, you know, by probably about a month or two in, I started to develop my own, you know, business um, in terms of getting people, you know, stopping right. by the office and talking. And by the time I left, you know, three years later, I would kind of say we were both, you know, on par with just developing those relationships. And he had the things that he needed to do. And I had the things that I needed to do. But a lot of the things that I do today, I learned in that elementary school, even as yeah. superintendent, there were things that I'm still applying to the work today. That's all. You know, the, the I think that I, I, what I really appreciate about that story is I'm, I'm guessing the person knew they were quite the model. Like they, not, not that they're arrogant or anything like that, but they knew they're good, but they also took the time to mentor. And I think that really matters is that when you see people in these spaces, that are doing stuff that you want to do that they're helping people come behind them and make sure that they're really empowering that so i think that that is a a really uh powerful story i you know i've worked in all levels of school and the biggest thing about difference between elementary middle school and high school is the jokes right what's funny i was like my hardest transition was like okay that, these jokes aren't floating with the high school kids anymore so i gotta i gotta ramp it up a little bit so that was me <laughs> I don't know if that was that I'm the only person that had that issue. It was like, yeah, well, how come my jokes aren't funny? Like moving from grade four to high school. It was uh, and I'll tell you, in modern cool. education, everybody works, you know, really, really hard. But to your point, the other thing that I learned is that as a high school person departmentalized and you know, 
we're preparing students, you know, right. for college and career. This is very serious business. You know, at the elementary level, they could kind of take their time. They're going to dabble <laughs> in this and that. And I really grew, I developed an appreciation really quickly, oh, yeah. just how hard elementary teachers work and the variety of responsibilities that they have throughout the day. It, it's awesome work. It's, but it's really the jokes that are the biggest. Difference. <laughs> it really is. And it's by really, the way, that's, that's not, the not just the staff jokes, but it's more the student jokes. And I'll tell you, <laughs> right. elementary students are some of the funniest people I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're good. The, yeah. That, that, uh, um, I, 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 you know, a lot of the work that I do with school districts and you, this is, um, they, they'll like split me up. Right. So they have like me work with elementary, middle school in the morning, uh, high school in the afternoon or vice versa. Right. And I, I always try to talk them out of it. I'm like, no, you put all these people in the same room. And because then they start, because a lot of times it's like, well, you have it super easy because you have the same kids all day. And they're like, well, you have it super easy because you teach the same class five times a day. And it's like, no, 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 there's actually, there's things that are different, of course, but there's things that are, good teaching is good teaching at all levels. And I think that we need to find more spaces where we can learn from each other because there's obviously things that you brought, but there's all these things that you learned and we have to tap into that. So I, I really appreciate that connection. And so last question, um, you've been in, did you say you started education? You graduated high school in 91. Is that right? I graduated high school in 91 and then college in 95. All right, I was a, little, a couple of years behind you. So you look back at your teaching career and your superintendent now, if you can go back to, you know, first year teacher Scott, what advice would you give and why? It's interesting. I, I, that's a really, really good question because, you know, having 25 years later, the first no. thing I think I have to do real quick is just remember what it was like to be a, uh, to be a first year teacher. And then I hate to say it, but I think 25 years ago, times might have been or at least they feel like they might have been a little bit simpler and mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less expectations and um so i really think the educators of today they're really up against it you know for a lot of different reasons you know expectations are you know through the roof right now we're dealing yeah. with a lot of things at the societal level in terms of you know things forces you know kind of spinning around and things like that and you have to confront you know different things but i think that i what i would probably say is really take your time in developing, you know, your craft, you know, kind of getting back to the story that I just shared a couple of moments ago is that I think we want everything to fall into place immediately. Right. And I think it's kind of similar to the students that we teach, right? Some students are going to grab onto it right away and run with it and take it to the next level. Some students, it's going to take a little bit longer and some aren't going to get it in our time frame, And we have to figure out ways in which we can be patient with them and approach it in different ways in order to make sure that they that they get that and i think i feel the same way you know with teaching you know at the end of the day it really is a multi-year process and i think in year one if you can just get your classroom management down obviously yeah. everything is important but if you can get your classroom management procedures down to me that's the foundation of all you know really good you know education is that you have to make sure that you can manage students and you can manage your materials in an efficient and effective way and then I would kind of say in year two, if you could really begin to hone in on the instruction, you had a, a year to kind of figure out what works, what doesn't, how can you perfect that a little bit better? And then to me in year three, you could really target in on that assessment a little bit better. And really, if your classroom management is going pretty well, if your instruction is going really well and you're engaging those learners, the last piece is how do you make sense as of what they learned? And, you know, the, really the main thing is, did they learn at the end of the lesson? And honing in on that assessment piece, I think, is really important. You just basically gave every school district listening the three-year mentoring plan for teachers coming into the school district. You just, you just gave it away for free. So I'll have to put like a tip jar up on Amazon or something like that for you for doing that. The, the thing that you said, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I've done this podcast quite a while. And I've never heard that advice before. And I thought it was really profound, you know, like basically we should remember what our first year is like, but don't assume our first year 25 years ago is similar to the first year that people are having right now. It's very different. So I, I, I appreciate that. I guarantee you a lot of teachers that are early on in the career probably appreciate that you just said that. And I, I think that means a lot. So I'm going to leave it on that, Scott, because that was that was a that was a slam dunk answer on the last one. Just going off the top of your head there, too. Right. Thanks. Yeah. You know, and I, I, what I would say is that 
I value that process so much that, and you and I have spoken, yeah. I'm in a smaller K-8 district, you know, here in New Jersey. So one of the things that that allows me to do is I'm pretty hands-on with a lot of things. Yeah. And for the last 12 years, one of the opportunities that I've had is I actually do the new teacher orientation in August for all of our staff. And the reason that yeah. I do that is because I think I have to model that I understand what teaching is and the value of teaching. And I also think it's important that they understand what the superintendent, the educational leader of the district, what he or she, you know, values at the end of the day. And I also want to make sure that my thoughts and and what I hope for the teachers as they kind of make their way through Eaton Town Public Schools, I want them to hear it from me because every once in a while, although I have great administrators and I have a great team here, yeah. sometimes, you know, in that telephone game coming from me to them, things might not be delivered in the exact same way that I would want to deliver them. And I, th I think that's a really important time that beginning of the year for me to connect with them. And that's just some of the information that we go over in that, you know, that during that teacher orientation program. Just got a masterclass in leadership, everybody. So thanks, Scott. Great advice. And I, yeah. I, uh, yeah. the last thing I want to say, I went to one district that I worked for five or six years, never met the superintendent. And I went to another school district and met the superintendent on the first day. And I'm assuming everyone could figure out which district I liked way more, right? Exactly. Right there. That made a huge difference. So Scott, thanks so much for being on the podcast. I, I loved your answers. I know a lot of people are going to benefit. Everyone, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.